Despot's game caught my fancy a few months back when we were offered up a review code. Pixel art mayhem with chill music and roguelike properties had me sold. Seeing it then announced for Game Pass shortly before its release was a really nice surprise. After spending a few dozen hours with the game, I am happy to say that it's deeper than it looks. It is another solid addition to the Xbox platform and Game Pass subscription. So let's break down why in the Xbox era review of Despot's game, Dystopian Army Builder. <laughs> This game is all about the second part of its title, Dystopian Army Building. You are stuck in a seemingly never-ending game run by an evil robot. They are forcing you to build an army of initially naked humans so that you can fight your way through hordes of enemies. To help you survive and thrive, you have an enormous assortment of weaponry to give your soldiers, turning them into dozens of different types of fighters who cover a large amount of classes. What spawns where is a major piece to each run, and you'll want to try and match class types to gain special abilities. Have three cultists? Well, now they can work together to summon a tentacle monster who deals enormous damage. During fights? Well, you just watch and hope that you set things up well enough. There are also buttons, which you get to choose at the end of each floor. They can be extremely powerful and range from killing every non-boss monster in a room to healing your entire team for 30%. It's a big strategy game and you have no real mid-fight control elements. And thanks to that, it all worked pretty darn well on a controller. Anytime outside of fights, you can choose where each member of your army is positioned. There is a button that allows auto positioning and I admit that in my later runs I just started letting the game handle this as it worked really well, probably better than most of my own setups. For any successful run, you will need a large number of healers and tanks though, which sometimes is just out of your control if the randomized nature of the gear doesn't pan out. Everything in the game operates on a per run coin currency. You'll use these to buy gear, upgrade gear, upgrade your talents, which we'll get into in a little bit, and very importantly, to buy food. Every time you move from one of the grid-based rooms to another, you'll use up a bit of your food supply depending on the size of your army. If you run out, you'll suffer a 30% damage penalty, which can be fatal in the later stages of a run and be stuck in a room until you sacrifice some of your soldiers. To find food, you'll need to keep an eye for its icon on that grid-based map. The map layout, like most other things, is procedurally generated as well in the main campaign mode. Most rooms feature enemies, and after you defeat them, you can buy various gear items or mutations. The mutations in your choice on what you buy or earn through the narrative rooms, which I'll get into in a little bit, are key to being successful. Most mutations are percentage modifiers buffing certain classes of your crew. Occasionally, I did run into a frustrating run where I would have an army full of fencers, yet all of my mutations were for other classes. And I simply could not pump out enough damage to keep up with the enemy count. Overall, things felt uh, decently balanced for the most part, as long as you aren't like me for the first few hours and completely forget about the leveling tree. That talent tree, much like everything else, uses the coin currency, and if you ignore it like I did, things will be a lot tougher on you than they would be otherwise. It is frustrating that everything shares a currency, as it makes leveling each area increasingly more difficult in a way that I just didn't really find fun. I could have an incredibly dangerous pretzel throwing army member, or give everyone 10 more hit points, but rarely both. Most of the time, the food management system is the biggest deterrent to actually upgrading anything because exploring around leads to you constantly having to spend all of your coins on food. Exploring can be worth it at times due to those narrative rooms. The writing in them can be hilarious, and if you are able to complete the very basic per floor quests in them, you are generally rewarded with something quite useful. Graphically, the game is on the plainer side of the pixel art style. It's kinda ugly. Animations are decent, and I do like the art style overall, but it's just by no means a looker. The various outfits given to your army as you gear them up make their roles clear and easy to understand before you've even read the descriptions, and the enemy designs vary from really basic and tiny to quite nice looking and very large. 
The music is a solid mix with various synthy tunes to accompany you on each run. And while there is no voice acting, there is a decent amount of writing and it's really good. It never takes itself seriously and it helps elevate what otherwise would have felt like a bit too light of a package without it. There is a decent smattering of modes on hand, but the only one that really grabbed me was the default dungeon run one. There are a series of challenge modes with specific gear and room layouts you can take on as you work your way up the online leaderboards, as well as a pseudo PvP one where you'll run through an endless number of linear rooms trying to build up an army to take on computer controlled versions of teams that other players have come up with. The main mode has a large number of modifiers, though most are tied to very specific requirements, some of which can take a while to unlock. In the end, what seems to be a very light amount of content on the surface gains a lot of depth as you play through each mode and unlock various mutations and gear pieces so that they can drop in the future. It's not the biggest metagame for a roguelike setup, but it did just enough to keep me coming back. In conclusion, Despot's game, Dystopian Army Builder, is a pretty fun, if slightly flawed, strategy game that I'm glad I decided to check out. While it's not something I might recommend to most for a full-on purchase, it is definitely worth trying out on Game Pass if you're actively subscribed. Thanks for watching, and if you can like, comment, and subscribe, it is massive for our channel's growth, and we'll see you next time here on Xbox Era.